Hi, I'm Ryan and you are watching my YouTube series on functional programming. If you find my videos useful, please subscribe, like, or let me know in the comments. In this episode, we're going to learn about the point-free notation. The point-free notation is all about constructing your business logic by using utility functions, most of which will be curried. Well, that is a bunch of words, but let's see some examples of how we can do that. So I have an object over here, which has a first name, last name, primary email, and secondary email. And let us say that we have a requirement to get all the emails of this user. The traditional way of doing this would be you would create a function called as getEmails, which constructs an array and just extracts those values. And if we were to run this, we would get this. Simple and straightforward. However, notice that a lot of the implementation details are exposed as part of this, of this code. We are going to take a different approach to this, a more functional approach. So let's see what's happening over here. What we are doing is we are trying to extract the values of two fields here. So what if we created a function that extracts the value of any fields that we ask it? So I made a little function over here which, which says get values. And if you provide it with a bunch of fields, it will map over them and return the values of those fields from the object. So now I can go ahead and create a new function called as const get emails, which accepts a user and what it does is get values and now if I print it out it should give me the same result there you go however we can actually make this better why because if you look at this code, the first argument is known. It's never going to change in our business logic. We need the primary email and secondary email. All we, all we are waiting for is for the user, which might come from an Ajax request or from any other place in your database. So let's see what we can do. Const curry is equal to require lambda. And now I have a curried version of this function by simply wrapping my business logic or my the implementation detail of my get values function in the curry function. This lets me do something like this. So now I, if I run this code, I still get the same output. Pretty simple, right? But notice this function takes one argument and my curried function is also waiting for the same argument. So I can do something like this. And now if I run this code, I have the same output. And notice how my code is a lot more readable, right? I say for get emails, I want to get the values of these two fields. There are no implementation details leaking out of here. Now you may think like, how is this useful? How is this any better? The point is that we have this nice little utility function which we can use for other purposes. For example, let us say you want to get the full name of a user. What I could do is const get, get name fields name is equal to get values of first name and last name and now I can use my same function join the fields and I can print the name of the user so I used my same utility function for both use cases and 
notice how I did not even pass the second argument for user over here because that's what it is waiting for anyways. So this was like a point free notation of using a curried function. That's about it for this episode. Stay tuned for more interesting stuff in the next one. Thanks for watching.